one, Mr. Jusawa here. Uh, I haven't got a chance to shoot many videos lately, but um, I've been really just throwing myself at the blacksmithing thing full on and uh, went out and bought myself a supply of coal. Right here what I have is I bought a 20 pound bag of lump hardwood charcoal and I found a deal on charcoal briquettes, 29 pounds for $10. So I got about roughly 50 pounds of coal right there. I've beefed up my anvil. I got it on a nice heavy stand. This is all built out of two by six. All except for one piece down there is built out of womanized two by six, one by two stringers on the corners. My 25 pound block of steel and another block of steel here that I use sort of as a horn, but that weighs roughly about 15 pounds little tray on the side and I've also beefed up my forge a good bit. Built a square pan out of eighth inch sheet metal. It's four inches high on the sides, two inches high on the front and I just sort of got a rough little shroud in there to keep the sparks down a bit. And uh, wanted to show you a couple of the projects and things I've been working on lately. So let's go over to the closet here. got the usual suspects and then here's all my songs that I've made these are half inch, three eighths, seven sixteenths it's a pair of scrolling tongs a pair of flat bit tongs that hold roughly quarter inch something like a file and then three sets of hollow bit tongs quarter inch, three eighths, and half inch roughly anyways um, I finished up Railroad spike tomahawk, put it on a stick, just put it on a you know, nice round straight branch instead of putting it on a hammer handle. Turn that back. Yeah, screw it. Um here I'm starting to build a little display stand. I'm all out of the way. Don't know how well you can see, but I've just got a arrangement of hooks. There's an S hook there. There's a small horseshoe I've been working on learning to make heel cocks and stuff lately. There's a small steel snail made out of quarter inch. Those are a few three eighths hooks. One's plain with a uh, you know plain and flattened out so you don't have to drive it into the wall. Same with those three. That one's got a small pineapple twist. That one's got a just a plain twist on square bar. And then these are all quarter inch. One of them made just flattened out with a hole punch through so you don't have to drive it into your wall and the rest of them as a normal drive hook would be. And I finally got forge welding down. So this is my first forge welded item. This is a piece of quarter inch rod. You double it over on itself and you forge weld the tips together. Turn into that nice little curly cue that's real familiar. And then uh sort of hard to explain. There's a good few videos of how to make these on the internet, but it's basically just a heart shape with a hook on the bottom and a, a hole punched through. I've seen people punch holes through the top so you can hang two of them, but I think that just sort of wrecks the shape of the piece. And uh, so anyways, that's what I've been working on. I've been trying to get down to production, you know, get, a, get consistency down and uh, start trying to sell some of these items. Anyways, and um, some upgrades to my tools. This is my newest, not newest, but my new favorite hammer. This is an old German cross peen, and it's about 75 plus years old. And I put one of those nice octagonal handles on it. And it has a really nice grip. I've shaped it to fit my hand really nice. It's a pretty short handle, so you don't have to choke up on it that much. And as you can see, I built myself a little brand so I can put it on all my tools. And um, so that's what I use mainly for forging now. It's roughly three pound, and uh, I use a lighter, smaller ball peen for finishing blows. But um, I'm gonna show you some of the other tools I've made recently. Uh, thanks for watching. All right, so here's a few of the tools I made just recently. This one right here was a small uh, jeweler's hammer, a cross pane, and I drew that down into a square point, sharp.
sharpen the end into a chisel point. And this is what I use for punching holes through anything heavier than about half inch or so, five eighths, and uh, it works really nice. Left the backside soft, obviously, so it doesn't keep chipping and uh, cracking and doing funny stuff on me. And that's just put on a piece of two by six that I hacked off with a hatchet. And there's my little brand again. Any tool that I make from now on, I brand myself. This is a small fuller. Depends on, I guess, what country you're from. In uh, the UK, they call it a fuller. Over here in the US, they call it a creaser. That's for putting grooves into horseshoes. And obviously, this one's very small. It's for making miniature horseshoes, like what I make. And that's made out of 5 8 inch medium carbon rebar. It hardens very well, holds an edge very well, and if you leave the back end soft enough, it won't chip. Uh, another tool here, I turned a small little ball peen hammer into a sort of a clipping hammer. And it's got a nice rounded face, so I use that sort of for a rounding hammer. But that's under one pound, so good for making small stuff like what I make. And then for punching, hammer eyes on top tools now. I made this punch out of an old tire iron. Just drew it down square and then up there turned it oval so it'll give you a nice even hole to any top tool that you make. Also this is an old brick chisel, masonry chisel. I just lopped the handle off of it and now that fits in the hole in my anvil and works a lot better than uh, using a chisel and hammer to cut stuff off. And I've also made a little sort of a miniature horn. So it sort of sounds stupid, but it comes in real handy for putting stuff over, bending, and you know, you just, you can't do that on the edge of an anvil like you can on a, over a horn or a piece. Anyways, um, I'm going to see what else I can find lately that I've been making and uh, show you guys what I've been doing. Hey everyone, so here's another tool that I made. It's don't really know what else to call it, but I've seen them made on YouTube and they're called the Bill Hook. From as far as I know, it's sort of like a miniature scythe handheld. But this is made out of an old file, which is top steel. And you can see sort of the general shape that I gave it, banged into an old file handle while it was a bit hot. And that's what I ended up with. And this right here is my first successful forge weld. That's a piece of quarter inch rod. Forge welded together and I'm going to test it in a little bit. Have my brother shoot a video for me to see how well it turned out. Anyways, I don't know how well you can see. Not everything's quite disappeared, but it feels pretty strong. Hey everyone, this is Mr. J. So here today. This is my first successful forge weld. It's made out of quarter inch rod. I didn't use any flux and no scarping to make this. Just for my first one, I was pretty excited. I'm going to test it right now. I'm going to have my brother record this. This is quarter inch rod on my anvil. This is a one pound ball beam. And I'm going to see just what it takes to break this. This was one heat and about maybe six hammer blows. As you can see, it's starting to deform. A bit hard there, got a little overzealous. That thing is holding. That's my first forge wall. About to break. A couple more blows and it would break. But anyways, thank you to Mr. Gary Huston for explaining. Out of Fort Everybody have a good day.